So thank you. And as Pia said, I will talk about crustal deformation along the Dead Sea Fault using GPS. And by saying crustal deformation, I am basically mostly meaning interseismic deformation. And by uh, saying Dead Sea Fault, I'm, I will focus on the mostly on the central and southern part of the Dead Sea Fault and GPS. I will use both campaign and permanent stations to just try to understand the crustal deformation along the Dead Sea Fault. So let's start. So just brief introduction, the Dead Sea Fault goes from the Red Sea at the south to, the, to Turkey and the Anatolian plate in the north. It's about 1000 kilometers long and uh, it's the plate boundary between Sinai and Arabia plate and it accumulates left lateral strike slip motion along the fault. In the order of about five millimeters per year, we'll see what the slip rate here is uh, in a minute. Uh, so if we'll zoom into our study area, so here you can see on the left, the different sections of the Dead Sea Fault, the Arava Valley and the uh, Dead Sea Basin and the Jordan Valley and Jordan Gorge. And you can also see a, a major intraplate within Sinai Plate, the Carmel Giboa Fault System. Here is the Carmel Fault next to the Mediterranean and the Gilboa Fault next to the, uh, next to the Dead Sea Fault. And in a minute, we'll see what the role of these faults are. And on the right, you can see the location of earthquake in the last 35 years along uh, in, uh, in the Levant area. You can see that most of the earthquake occur along the Dead Sea Fault. With some, with some earthquake uh, within Sinai Plate, and you can see also that some earthquake occur along the Carmel Gilboa Fault system. Uh, I'm also presenting here the two large uh, earthquakes that occur in the last century: the 6.3-1927 Jericho earthquake and the 7.2-1995 Nueva earthquake that occur within the uh, Elat or Aqaba uh, Gulf, Gulf of Elat and Aqaba. Now, just if we'll move to long-term slip rate before we'll go, we'll uh, jump to um, a GPS uh, slip rate, then we see that early studies suggested that the slip rate uh, is between uh, five to 10 millimeters a period. This was done by a offset of geological features. Later studies suggested that the slip rate is around six millimeters per year. And if we we'll move to geomorphology, then um, uh, along the Arava Valley in the south, uh, studies suggested that the long-term slip rate in the, since the Pleistocene is between three and seven millimeters per year. And uh, along the along the Jordan Valley is about five millimeters per year. And uh, uh, here in the north along the Jordan Gorge, it's around four uh, millimeters per year. So this is the long slip rate, uh, long-term slip rate. Now, before we continue, I just, again, brief introduction about the interseismic deformation do, during the seismic cycle. I'm sure you all know it but just uh, that will be all in the same page. So along the interseismic period, most of the deformation occur below certain depths. You can see it here. So uh, we, we, in geodesy, we call it the locking depth. Um, and in this, in this case, the, uh, the, the shape of the velocity profile across the fault has an R tangent shape. Now, in some cases, um, slip, some slip occur within the seismogenic zone or above the locking depth. 
uh, you can see it here, some slip occur and we then we'll call it a shallow creeping uh, fault. And then the curve that represents the velocity profile will have a shape like this red curve here. So you see it deviates from the R tangent shape and there is a, a, a shift in the velocity very close to the fault. And this is a creeping uh, fault. Um, now, let's go back to our study. So we are measuring uh, with GPS, uh, the Dead Sea Fault for the last 25 years. In this study, I'm using measurements of 23 years between 1996 and uh, 2019. I'm using raw data from 60 permanent stations and uh, two, 209 campaign station. I also added the rotated velocities of uh, published by Gomez et al in uh, 2020. So he, he published the velocities of uh, you see the green, uh, the green uh, uh, triangles here uh, uh, the, uh, of 22 campaign station in Jordan. So here you can see the location in blue of the campaign station and in red, the permanent station that I used. And um, we, we, we are going to the field several times every year to do a campaign since 2009 and uh, and uh, sometime not in the best condition we do it but still we do it every year and at the end of all this measurement and, and uh, processing we got this uh, a velocity map so what we can see here we can see that this left lateral strike slip motion along the Dead Sea Fault, you see that the velocity in the Arabia plate are much larger than the uh, velocities in Sinai plate. This is, by the way, uh, relative to stable Sinai, the, the, the velocities that I'm showing here. And uh, so, and if we look at some profiles, then we see uh, you can see here profile A to A to E are along the Dead Sea Fault from north to south. And also profile F is uh, across uh, the uh, Carmel Fault here. Uh, as you can see, you can see this uh, uh, left lateral strike slip fault uh, along the profiles. But we can also see that in profile A, Northern Jordan Valley, and in profile C, the Dead Sea Basin area, there is a jump in the velocity uh, across the fault. So this is a area that we suspect that there is a shallow creep. Uh, this section are uh, creeping at shallow depths. Now we can see also some kind of left lateral motion also along the Carmel uh, Fault here. Um, so in order to understand the spatial variation of uh, slip rates along the Dead Sea and Car uh, Carmel uh, Gilboa Fault uh, system, I develop a 3D inversion block model. And uh, let me show you, and I run two main models. One is locked and one with a shallow creep. And uh, let me show you the results. So this is the locked model. You can see here uh, on the left, the residual velocities and on the right, the slip rates. Um, uh, as you can see, there is a good agreement between the model and the, and the uh, observations. And what do we see with the slip rate? We see that the slip rate is similar uh, until the, uh, in the order of five millimeters per year, until the intersection with the Carmel Gilboa fault system. And uh, north to the Carmel Gilboa fault system, we see um, that the, there is a reduction in the slip rate velocity in an order of one millimeters per year. And we see that some, some slip is transferred to the Carmel Gilboa uh, 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 fault system. It's in an oblique motion here. There is an opening component and also a strike slip component here. And if we'll move now to our best fitting model that include a shallow creep, then again, we see 
the, the slip is almost similar, about five millimeters per year until the intersection, and then a reduction in about one millimeters per year north to this intersection. But we can also see here that the, we have two creeping seg, uh, segments, one within the Dead Sea Basin and the other one in the north of the uh, uh, in Northern Jordan Valley. So, uh, and this creeping uh, 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 rates are in the order of between 60 and 70 uh, percent of the total motion uh, along these specific sections. Um, and here we can see also the profile and, uh, um, and you can see the result of the modeling in, uh, in uh, black lines, you can see the creeping model and in dashed line, the locked model. And you can see that there is a good agreement between the, the, the two models uh, in sections that are not creeping, but we can see also the, that the creeping uh, model, the model with shallow creep um, is doing much better work where you have uh, creeping sections in the Northern Jordan Valley and in the Dead Sea Basin. What about the locking depths of this and the seismogenic zone? So our locking depth, the model locking depth is between 18 to 14 kilometer depth. And we see a general agreement between the uh, locking depth and the seismogenic zone depth. Uh, there is some discrepancy within the Dead Sea Basin area. So here is the Arava Valley, the Dead Sea Basin, the Jordan Valley and the Jordan Gorge. We see some uh, discrepancy in, uh, in the Dead Sea Basin area. Uh, uh, I, guess, I guess maybe this discrepancy is related to the shallow creeping, so the model uh, do not take into account in a very good way the, the actual locking depth of this area or the seismogenic zone of this area. Uh, so now if we we'll summarize the, the tectonics of this area, then we see that relative to Southern Sinai plate, the motion of Arabia plate is in the order of 4.8 to 4.7 millimeters per year. But the Northern Sinai plate uh, has an oblique motion in the order of uh, 0 0.8. Actually, this motion is parallel to the Dead Sea, uh, to the Dead Sea, uh, the direction of the Dead Sea. So, and, and so we get some kind of uh, um, an opening between the Southern and the opening in the south and the north uh, of Sinai plate. Um, now, I want to focus now in three different sections in order to uh, see what, uh, what exactly do we see in three different sections of the, of the Dead Sea Fault. And we'll start with the Southern Arava Valley here in the south, just next to the Gulf of uh, Elat and Aqaba. Uh, so here you can see the velocity uh, of our GPS stations, and you can see the nice fit of the velocity profile to five millimeters per year. Um, and now let's try to combine this velocity and geodetic parameter that we obtained to, uh, uh, to palo seismic data and try to see what we can find out about the seismic hazard in this area. So along the main tra uh, uh, trace of the Dead Sea Fault in this area, there were two main uh, palo seismic studies, one by Rivka Amit et al in 2002, and the other one was done by uh, Jan Klinger et al in 2015. And uh, these two studies are 14 kilometers apart from each other, but they are both in the same section of the uh, Dead Sea Fault in the Southern Arva uh, Valley. And what I notice in these two palo seismic studies that uh, they both report five large earthquakes during the last 
2,500 years. Both reports for a large earthquake during the last 2,000 years and two large uh, earthquakes during the last 1,000 years. And from historical record, we know that these two uh, large events are probably the 1068 and the 1212 events occur along this uh, uh, section. If we'll take these two um, catalogs, these palo seismic catalogs, and uh, calculate the average recurrence uh, interval from both catalogs, then I found out that the average recurrence interval is in the order of 460 years plus minus 290 years. This is a big uh, uncertainty, but still this is the uh, result that I get. And if we remember that the last earthquake occurred in this area was in uh, 1212, the year of 1212, then large earthquake along this section is probably overdue. Now let's, uh, we know that these are all large events greater than uh, six, but let's try to understand uh, also what is the maximum magnitude expected along this section. So for that, what I did, I took the instrumental data that I showed you before, the last 35 years of instrumental data that were measure along the Dead Sea Fault within this section. And uh, uh, we find nice agreement to this, uh, uh, to this uh, 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 linear, linear uh, relations when we plot it uh, in the frequency magnitude relation curve uh, uh, plot. And here you can see also the Palo seismic data that I just show you in a frequency magnitude uh, plot. Now, uh, in order to understand from here that we know that this uh, earthquake are larger than six, but in order to understand what is the possible maximum magnitude in this area. So what I did, I, I uh, calculated the moment balance equation, the seismic moment balance equation. And in one side, I took all possible earthquake uh, from a, a, all possible earthquake until the maximum magnitude while assuming Gutenberg-Richter relations. And in the other side of the equation, I took the a parameter that I was obtained, obtained from the geodesy. And the result of this calculation is this frequency maximum magnitude relation that you see here in the green line. So, and what I found from this calculation is that the maximum magnitude expected along the Southern Arava Valley is between 7.5 to 7.7 .7 earthquake. Um, now we can also we can also calculate the slip deficit since we know that the last large earthquake occurred in 1212 and the slip uh, deficit is greater than four meter and it's equivalent to 7.3 earthquake that already accumulated in this area. And if we'll add to that the Coulomb stress changes that occur from the last large earthquake here in this area, the 7.2 1995 Nueva earthquake, then we can all conclude from this that the Southern Arava Valley and the Northern uh, Gulf of Elat um, large earthquake is expected to happen soon in this area. Um, now let's move to further north to the uh, Dead Sea uh, Basin, the P Dead Sea Pula Park Basin. You can see the location of the Dead Sea uh, uh, Basin. You can see here in the southern part of the uh, um, Dead Sea Basin. You can see the southern boundary of the Dead Sea Basin, which is called Amatiao Fault. And you can see the eastern boundary fault and the western boundary fault that is called in the southern part of the uh, Dead Sea Basin, the Sedum Fault. And uh, here you can see in triangle the location of of uh, my GPS uh, stations. And uh, uh, also, uh, and also a seismic reflection line that I'm using for my study here and a borehole 
here the location of ball, so everything is very tight here. And, um, and here you can see the result of the GPS station. In the red is the observation, and in the black is our modeling results. See, there is a nice agreement between the two. But what we can see here, uh, we can see obviously the left lateral motion. You can see this, this uh, uh, nice uh, large uh, velocities in Arabia plate. Uh, but we can see also here within the Dead Sea Basin area that there is a jump in the velocity when I cross the southern boundary fault and the western boundary fault. So you can see just very nicely the, the, the uh, motion along the fault. And we can actually, accept since we see this uh, nice jump in the velocity, so we can actually expect that there is a creep in this area, as I showed you before. And now here you can see it also in this time series. You can see the time series uh, years and uh, north direction. You can see this is across the Sedum Fault in the west. So this is a permanent station that located just east to the fault. And this is a campaign station located just west to the fault. They are like 500 meters apart from each other. And you can see this different uh, time series. Um, and you can see that the eastern uh, station goes much faster to the north than the western station. And also here along the Amatiao fault, we can see similar uh, time series. Um, you can see it also in this velocity profile across the falls. You can see this very uh, shift in the velocity, the jump in the velocity when we cross the southern fault, the western boundary fault, uh, very nicely. And from, from our modeling, we got that um, slip is, the total slip is divided between the eastern and the western side of the a Dead Sea Basin, a pull apart basin, and the total motion is in the order of 4.8 millimeters per year. But we, we also found out that the, the slip rate along the Sedum Fault is in the order of, of the total motion along the Sedum Fault, 2.5 millimeters per year. And the, and the depth of the shallow creep is in the order of uh, uh, three, mil three kilometer. Now, in order to understand this depth of shallow creep and what can be the reason for this shallow creep in this area, I process the, I, I process the, um, the seismic reflection that I, a line that I showed you before. And here we can see the location of station. Um, Along the along the, the the seismic line, and here this is the result of the of the the process. So you can see this is the sedum fault in blue here, and in yellow I'm presenting very thick salt layer that uh, that is here in the depth between two and three kilometers. And there is a nice agreement between the salt layer that uh, the depth of the salt layer and the depth of the shallow creeping zone uh, in this area. Now, do we have some evidence for surface rupture also in this area? So if we will go further north, then this is a picture I took uh, using a drone. So you can see our cars here and you can see this very nice line here that uh, the, uh, this very nice line here. And if we look at the surface, then this is what we see at the surface. You can see that it something like, uh, there is a step here of something like uh, 20 centimeters. And you can see that it also uh, crosses this uh, water channel here. Um, so, so I hope I convince you that there is a shallow creep in this area. Uh, now let's move further north. Then we'll go to the northern uh, uh, Jordan Valley area. Uh, 
So again, you can see this different behavior in the GPS velocity in north and south to the Sea of Galilee. In the south, in the northern Jordan Valley area, you can see this velocity, higher velocity in the uh, Arabia plate than in the Sinai plate. And you cannot see it here in the Jordan Gorge area. And also in this profile, you can see this very nice creeping behavior in the Northern Jordan Valley area. And you, we cannot see it here in the Jordan Gorge area. These are two sections just next to each other, yes? Um, uh, and again here, there is some evidence. This is a kibbutz. Uh, located just next to the GPS profile. So we can see some evidence here in a, in a, a shifted, a, a shifted a, a sidewalks, a, a broken and shifted the concrete shelter here, and also pipes that are a, fixed and refixed a, every several years. Uh, in this kibbutz. So um, again, again, a, a possible explanation for this shallow creep also in the Northern Jordan Valley is a very thick uh, salt layer here that probably changed the, changed the properties of the fault and served maybe as a lubricant or as a plastic and behave plastically, deform plastically. So you can see here this between this yellow orange lines. These are two profile next to uh, south to the Sea of Galilee between the yellow and orange uh, profile a, a line here. This is the, the bottom of this salt layer and you can see the light uh, blue line here. So this is between 1000 and 2500 meters uh, Below the surface, there is a very thick uh, salt layer here, salt, salt layers here, um, yeah, which called the Semach uh, complex. We can also observe it in a, a deep borehole in this area. Um, so possible explanation for creeping along the Dead Sea area, Dead Sea fault area is the appearance of thick salt layer in this area. Now, why creep, shallow creep is so important for us? Then we know that creep reduces the probability to large earthquake along the fault section. But if we take the Northern uh, German Valley as an example, then we know that the measured creep rate is about 2.5 millimeters per year and the depth of the creeping section is about two kilometer. And we also know that the last large earthquake that occurred in this area occurred in 1033. So we can calculate the, the uh, seismic moment that was released as seismically since the last large earthquake. And uh, just, this is uh, just uh, back of an envelope and, uh, estimation. So we see that uh, uh, equivalent uh, earthquake in the order of 6.3, uh, magnitude 6.3 was released as seismically along this section uh, by a uh, creep. Uh, so if I'll summarize my talk, then we saw that the total slip rate along the southern section of the Dead Sea is about five millimeters per year. Now to the intersection with the Carmel Gilboa fault, the slip rate is about four millimeters per year in agreement with the long-term uh, slip rate that I showed you before. The Carmel Gilboa fault system is deformed in a total slip of about 0.8 millimeters per year, sub parallel to the Dead Sea fault direction. The Arava fault section are found to be fully locked, and large earthquake is expected in this area. Slip at the southern Dead Sea pull apart basin is divided between the eastern and western boundary fault. The Northern Jordan Valley and the Southern Dead Sea uh, sections are found to be creeping at shallow depths. And we found that shallow creeping depths are found to be 
in a good agreement with the depth of thick salt layer that in the south surf surface in this area. So thank you very much.